Hi, today I'm going to teach you how to make a rigid body simulation and create an effect where many small parts uh, fall down and then reveal like a pattern within the blocks as you saw in the beginning. Um, and it's a really easy thing to do. Uh, it always seems like, oh my god, how did they figure that out? But when you watch the tutorial and if you have done any Blender, you realize pretty quickly this isn't very difficult. And it's just a fun thing you can do a lot with. So I've decided to use Lego blocks. So I created a... Uh, a model in a uh, CAD software to do this because I don't like um, hard surface modeling in Blender. I've used a bunch of add-ons and I really don't like it. And uh, I created it. I imported it. As you can see, its its scaling is really weird. It's uh, 31 meters by 11 meters and whatever. And uh, this is because of I think uh, just an issue with the SDL exporting on the CAD software I used. It might not happen for you if you use a, a certain CAD software. And by the way, I will put this on a GitHub in the description. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to make this available for everyone. But the way you fix this is you want to make sure you know the dimensions of your object. So I know that this is 1000 times too big, quite literally. So I'm just going to do S.001 and that's how you scale. And it scales down a thousand. And now it's got realistic measurements uh, this is a one one uh, sorry 15 millimeters by 31 millimeters and it, it's uh, accurate now the reason you need accurate measurements is because when blender calculates rigid body simulations it's using 9.81 negative 9.81 as the constant for g so that's 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, if you have an object that's a mass or you know dimensions are way too large, it's going to uh, have difficulty calculating uh, everything uh, accurately. Like, I mean, it'll, it'll calculate it accurately, but for that scale. So you'll see it and you'll see the Lego blocks falling weirdly slow. And often when you look at simulations and you look at particularly, you know, not the greatest simulations, you'll see that. You'll see that the timings and the, the timings of the movements look wrong uh, and we want to try and stop this and you know avoid this as much as possible so we don't need to speed up or slow down anything uh, later on so we just want to make sure that we know the scale of our object and the object scale is correct uh, once you've done that i've just created a plane uh, and we're going to make this the uh, object that this is going to fall on and if you want actually what i am going to do is i'm going to go into edit mode with tab and i'm going to extrude and go down some arbitrary amount this is just because if it's a planar value and or a planar object and it's uh, trying to calculate the collisions sometimes with such a small object it'll fall straight through um, because it'll see this and think there's not enough thickness and it'll have just some calculation errors so just just for our own uh, ease of use or just to help us we're just going to add some more geometry so that we don't have particles or well lego blocks falling down now what we need to do is we want to take this. We've uh, gonna we're gonna click Control A and select Scale. So now this it, uh, here was saying 0 0.01. Now it's one. So this is the uh, the proper scale. We've told Blender this is the scale everything is supposed to be. Now there's a second problem. Uh, Blender has difficulties for some reason calculating the rotation of falling rigid bodies if they're imported from certain software. I don't know why this happens. I'm pretty sure it's a bug and I've really not found anyone with a definite reason for why this happens or a really good solution, but I figured one out. Um, my theory is that Blender has some data that it has in its STLs that it creates or any mesh based modeling uh, software creates when they make something and CAD doesn't have that. And I think that's what the issue is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click control A and create a cube. Now this cube is far too large, but that's actually okay. We're going to select this and then select the cube with shift select and do control J. Now what's happened is the cube had the Lego geometry added to it. So now the cube has whatever data it needs for Blender, which is my theory. I don't really know if this is why it works, but it worked. And now we can basically go into edit mode, click L uh, on one of the, uh, the cubes vertices and click X. And now we've deleted that and we have this Lego block and it should work. Now the simulations won't have any issues. And you know what, if you want me to show you an example of it having issues, let's quickly just do that. So let's use scale five just so it's a little bigger and it can be seen. And I'm gonna import another um, STL of the Lego block. Just give me one second. 
we'll bring both of them up and let's just give them a random rotation. So let's uh, do individual and then I've clicked R, R twice and this is very useful. Now it just uh, lets you rotate it like it's uh, a sphere, like you're orbiting a sphere. So I'm just going to rotate it, something like that seems good enough. We just want it to land and be in balanced. Uh, I'm going to go back to median just because we need that later on. And I'm going to, actually I should save, so let's save Lego Drop Tutorial. Okay. Let's save the Blender file, uh, and we're going to select these two, and we're going to go to Object, Rigid Body, Active. So let's just test that to see if that works. Yep, it has a rigid body added to it. And now we're going to go to Object for the, the ground plane, Object, Rigid Body, Passive. And that's like all you do in rigid body simulations. They're extremely simple. So once you've done this, what you're basically telling Blender is, uh, this isn't going to move. This is just uh, an object that's being treated as like a background. It's pretending like it's stationary and it's just going to interact with other rigid bodies. These aren't uh, pinned or anchored anywhere. These are going to move. And so now the way that you bake a rigid body simulation, and this is something people that have done fluid simulation bakes uh, might find a little weird, is there's no uh, physics tab bake or anything like that in the cache setting or something. You just play it and it'll bake live. And then there's a way to... Uh, make sure that that bake doesn't have to reset every time by baking the motion to keyframes. So then you just keyframe everything and it really makes it way easier. But first, let's do the bake. So we're just going to test bake. And you can see there are some issues here because the... One second. Let's uh, do control uh, or let's do uh, right click, set origin, origin to geometry. Let's try that again. Uh, and there's still some issues, but these are things we can fix. Um, anyway, we've got now, you can see clearly, this didn't move correctly. So it dropped, the Lego that we did all the stuff to obviously went underneath the object, but it at least uh, reacted correctly. This didn't, and that's a problem, uh, and this took some time to figure out. It kind of, it does some weird rotation thing, but it's not correct, and it slides, and it's weird. This at least dropped correctly, and you can see since it's got such low mass, it bounces a lot and it, it moves really fast so it it it's good this is a good indicator and uh this is just a proof of why it works i'm sorry i'm you know not being very succinct but anyway now that we've done that we'll delete all the the stl that we don't really want and let's right click and set the origin back origin to geometry and actually that's not looking right let's do origin center of Center of mass based on the volume. Okay. Uh, now we want to create a lot of Legos. So let's scale it down again. Uh, 0.2. So that's back to 1. Uh, and now we need to add array modifiers. Just a couple. So first we're going to add an array modifier to the Y axis. Or the X axis, I mean. So we're going to add over here. You can see that there's the factor X. Uh, which is the relative offset. So what it's doing is just relatively offsetting one, right? One length of the object so far. So if this was a little longer for some reason, as you can see, the offset is is changed because it's not an absolute offset or, or a constant offset. So we want to just add a little more uh, space just so that, you know, when it collides, if it touches, it'll uh, know that there's something wrong and it'll you know, like try, try to correct it by just adding a force. Uh, and we don't want that. So we're just going to add some... A factor here and we're going to make this uh, 10 seems good enough uh, then we're going to add another uh, array and this we're going to get rid of the offset on the x-axis and we're going to add some uh, to the y-axis now since i'm going to actually ra rotate all of the blocks randomly we want space so that they don't collide with one another so we're going to do again we now need to look at the widths so the the offset isn't the exact same See, it, it went a lot less. So we want to make this 2.2-ish, maybe 2.4. And now uh, if we, once we apply this and we make all the Lego blocks rotate, uh, we don't, there'll, there'll be no interactions between the two. Now we add a, we, we want to set this to 10 as well. And we can look up, maybe let's do nine because we kind of want a cube and we want to just make sure that it is a cube. And then let's add another array. And this time we're going to add height. Um, and since the height is quite small, I'm going to do a height of 3 at the z-axis. Let's see, we can press uh, numpad 1 
Uh, or if you don't have numpad, you can go into settings and use the number keys in the top of your keyboard as an emulator. You can do numpad 1 or numpad 3 to preview different sides. And that looks, I think, pretty good. And now we're going to, again, let's see how 10 looks, if that seems good. And yeah, that looks more or less like a cube of Legos. And this is looking good to me. So what we now do is we make sure we're not in edit mode, uh, which so if you're in edit mode, you'd have this and you try going control A, which applies a mod uh, a modifier and it'll it'll tell you, oh, you can't apply it in edit mode, blah, blah, blah. And if that's never working for you, just make sure you're in object mode. If we go back into object mode. Uh, it'll take some time because the geometry is kind of uh, challenging. And then we'll do control A, control A and then control A. And now we've applied the geometry. So if we again go tab, okay. And we can see that the geometry has been applied earlier. It just faked it. It was a modifier. Now there is an actual geometry that can be manipulated. And now we want to take uh, this geometry. And before we do anything, we just want to uh, orient it correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to set, uh, set geometry to origin. Uh, so that all the Legos are now at a center of mass. And we're going to just bring it up a little bit. And do control or, or do R X. Now it's limited to the X axis and do 45. And then R Y and do 45. I'm going to do negative 45 just because. And now we have a... Uh, now when it falls, it's not going to fall on top of each other, right? So there's going to be some bouncing and it's going to look... A lot nicer from the camera's point of view and speaking of which we're gonna take this camera and we're going to remove all the rotation and uh, reset the position and now we're gonna bring it up go into zero um, and see how that looks maybe bring it up so we're trying to visualize when the Lego drops how much space we want so let's see I think we should, no, 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 don't select that. Select the the camera like that. And now let's move it in. I think this is good. We just want, you know, a lot of stuff in the center. And I think that's good enough. So maybe we can reduce the camera scale. This doesn't do anything really. Uh, it doesn't like if you scale it, you can see the numbers are changing, but it doesn't affect what the camera sees really. Uh, unless you go into the negatives and now it's in the opposite direction. Um, but since that's done, we'll just bring the Legos above the camera so they're not visible in the beginning because we don't want it to be seen. We want the Lego to drop onto the uh, floor and reveal something to the camera. We don't want that in the beginning. And uh, we also don't want the camera to know that it looks like a cube. We want it just to feel like a pile. And this is the easiest way to make a, you know, a decent pile. So what we're going to do is we're going to go control, we're going to go tab. Uh, we're going to do A to select all the geometry. And then we're going to do P by loose parts. So now every Lego is going to be uh, separated into its own uh, part and it's going to uh, be its own object. So if you look at the, uh, if you look right here in the bottom uh, or in the top right, you're going to see a bunch of Legos up here. Exactly. So now we want to go back out of tab because the one we selected is not in object mode yet. And we're going to do right click, make, move to collection, new collection. Lego. And this is just for us. It's a lot easier if you have all the Lego in one place and we can minimize that. Uh, it's good to keep organized. Um, and this is looking really good. Now, while we have all of the Lego selected, we want to go right click and we want to set origin to geometry so that uh, the origin of all the geometry isn't in some weird one place. And if you rotate it, it'll rotate weird. Now everything will rotate correctly. And once we've done that, we can get to a lot of the more fun stuff. So I'm going to select the Lego again. Or let's make sure we just select the Lego. Control I inverts the selection. I'm going to hide everything. Now that we have all the Lego selected, we want to remove some of them, mainly because currently we have about a thousand particles or a thousand blocks and it doesn't really work super well. Uh, it'll take a lot of time. And I mean, depending on your computer, you might want to actually add less or add more. But what we can do is we can randomly delete things. So let's go over here, select, select random, and then just do X delete. So now we have a completely random set of cubes or Lego. 
And when they drop, now that there's some randomness, it'll uh, scatter more randomly and it's it's just good for the realism. And the second real benefit is it, it's easier on the computer. Now that we have that done, we want to just select, we want to randomize the rotation. Because if it rotates and they all fall down like this, it's going to be a dead giveaway that it's just weird. It's definitely a program that's done this comes from computer generation. So we want to go, we want to click O. Uh, or we can just go up here and click this. And what that does is it allows us to do something called um, it, uh, it allows us to do something called proportional editing. So if we uh, use the middle mouse button to scale, we can see that they're proportionally rotating. And this is really cool. We want to use proportional rotation to do a lot of stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here. We're going to go to random. So now it'll rotate. If I rotate this, it rotates everything in kind of the same area but there's a little bit of randomness to it. And we want to click R and then R again. So it has the sphere rotation that we were talking about earlier. And we're going to do a value like 5,000. And you can see now we have really good random rotation. Uh, and this is going to look really nice when we um, put everything together. Now, once we've done that, we also want, actually, you know what? I'm going to do that again. 180 or something negative 180. I don't know. Uh, play around with that. See till you get something uh, you like. I'm going to do this a few times too. And once you get, you know, a good pile, we can select all the geometry and do object, rigid body, add active. And if you're happy with this, we can now actually try to see what it looks like. So, oh shoot, I wanted to tab by mistake. <laughs> My mistake. Okay, I meant to do Alt H. So we did uh, H earlier to hide everything. Alt H reveals everything again. So now that we're back, we can click play and see if it has any issues. Hopefully, we'll see this move forward. If it doesn't, we can uh, delete things later. And yep, it moved. Okay, great. So wonderful. It calculated pretty fast. And it all fell through. Now that's a problem. Let's see why that is. My guess is we have made this no longer. Yeah, I think uh, I control Z out of this. Uh, this shouldn't have happened for you, but it happened for me. We're going to rigid body at passive just, just to make sure. And let's run the simulation one more time. And there we go. Perfect. Great. And we can see there was a collision. And I'm going to let it run to about 100. Or maybe actually I'll let it finish to 250 and then I'll be right back. Okay, great. So now it's done and we have our simulation. And it looks looking pretty good. There's some weird jitter, but that's fine. We can probably remove that later. Anyway, once we're done with that, we can now get to the fun bit where we add the Adult Swim logo and all that. Uh, and really, you could have added anything. So actually, as you can see, uh, let's let's now do some. Let's look at the simulation and see how you like. I'm seeing a lot of these blocks with their bottoms up, and that's okay. Actually, in this case, and when I did this before, I played around with this. This was a problem where most of them actually had their thing. There was like only two up, but there's enough up that I feel like this is okay. I think that the geometry has more mass at the top. So it actually just does this uh, because that's how Blender, just because of how Blender is calculating everything. But this looks like an okay sim to me actually. So I'm not going to work on this anymore. But if you wanted to fix that and you want to change that, you could just go back, collect, uh, select one of these, use proportional editing if you were doing it and randomly rotate a few areas so like just uh, going to portion editing lower the th the tall uh, the amount of area you're affecting with um the, the middle mouse button and you could make more of them uh, in different rotations or whatever but uh this is good enough to m for me i'm going to select all of the the lego not the the ground just the lego and i'm going to first make sure i've selected everything and then i'm going to go to uh object rigid body bake two keyframes and I wanted to bake to all of them. Now this is going to take about two minutes, uh, maybe more. Um, so when that's done, I'll, I'll, I'll come back. But after that happens, all of the, every single frame 
it's going to create a keyframe frame for the location that it baked the Lego blocks at. And this makes everything way easier. So uh, this basically allows you to save everything without having a cache file, which I actually really love because there's no, it, this doesn't add like a lot of space. I once had a cache file for like some fluid sim that was like 60 gig. Uh, this has none of that. This is really cool in that way. Uh, so when that's done, we'll come back and uh, I'll teach you how to texture it. Okay, now that took way longer than than two minutes, but I think that's because I did all 250 frames. If you do like 60 frames or 70 frames, you should be fine. Um, but now we can go to about frame 50 and we can move the camera. Oh shoot. Uh, move the camera. So let's just select the camera. Press zero. Again, uh, either on the numpad or just the number. And let's find around the center. So that seems about right. And let's just quickly watch this once. Yeah, that looks good. And now we can uh, do the texturing. So I'm going to go here. And normally, if you were to do this, the best method would be to figure out the material for the Lego and then uh, apply it. Because now if I do it, I can't just select all of them and apply material, but there's a way to work around that. So I go new material, Lego. Okay. And you'll see this, only this specific Lego has it. Like even if I would selected a bunch others, the first one you select has the material. So I click here, this doesn't have the right material. What we do is we select all of them and the first one, we want to make sure the first one is surrounded by the yellow selection, because the active selection. Uh, and these are all like secondary selections. I would do control L, which is the link. So now this links the uh, material to that original one. So now all of them will have the object Lego, which is exactly what we want. So now that we have all of them with the object Lego, we want to go to somewhere where they seem to all be in the right place. So we're going to do frame 50 as our uh, reference. And I'm going to remove this just for now. And I'm going to select all of these. And for some reason, oh yeah, some of the Legos felt like way down there. That's why these guys are really small. And we're going to do you, or we have to go into tab, sorry. So if you select all of them and you press tab, you go into the, the uh, edit mode for all of them. Then we go A, again, select everything you project from view or actually uh we shouldn't be in the camera for this because that's going to add some weird distortion we're going to go seven you project from view seven is top view so now that we have all of this done or and we've uh, projected it what we're going to do is we're going to go to shading we're going to locate our adult swim texture i'm going to link the adult swim texture in the github and then i'm going to put this here and now we have the adult swim texture right here and I'm going to plug that into the base color and let's look at how that works. So as you can see, it's, it's clearly projecting something and it's projected in a way that if we now look at it at a different frame, so let's go to material preview and let's deselect everything. It clearly doesn't continue that pattern. So it'll look like it's nothing until it falls into place. But obviously now we need to scale everything up or scale everything correctly. So we're going to go to UV editing, the UV editing area. Uh, we're going to select uh, everything in Lego. Well, that's not the most efficient way to do it. We're going to click tab because it, it automatically throws you in edit mode. And then I'm going to select all of this, maybe even that. And I think there's another one like down there somewhere, but who cares? We're going to select all of that. We're going to go tab. Okay, perfect. We're going to seven again and uh, select A. And just one more time, we're going to do project from view because it, it was squished for some reason. I think because it, it put everything on a cube UDIM space. Uh, but now it should work. And because uh, we've inputted the texture and told it uh, the dimensions of the texture. We're going to click A within this window, the uh, UV editing window, and we're going to scale it up so that the Adult Swim logo is kind of in everything. So scale, I'm going to scale it five. Uh, and that looks good. I think scale five seems good enough. 
and then we're going to do G and this is going to be very slow because there is quite a lot of geometry uh, because this is however many verts or polygons are in the original model which were a lot because it was a CAD model uh, that was imported into a mesh working software and multiply that by a thousand or well really five thousand or five hundred but that's still a lot of uh, polygons that looks good to me uh, we just want the uh, most, most of the geometry to be in the right place. Uh, the, the way I've been uh, navigating the views, I'm sorry, uh, so he's, he's pressing Z and then using my mouse to select everything. So I'm going to do, wow, it's really laggy. Okay, material preview. And that seems pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Now, uh, this isn't perfect. And one of the main issues you'll see is it looks, you would never see a Lego like that. You would never see a Lego half painted. Uh, in such a weird way and that kind of I mean in some cases if you're using balls or something else this would actually be good but since we're using Legos we want it so that the Lego only has one color this is an easy thing to do we'll go tab again and wait the two years it takes for it to go into edit mode um, and press a uh, only within uh, the well you have to press a here and then you can press a here and we want to go up here and do or where do you want to go? Over here. So this uh, this little slot here, and you want to go to individual origins. So now each of these these are called UV islands is going to be uh, able to be scaled separately, and we're going to go S zero. Okay. Now what we've done is we'll click enter because uh, that looks correct. What we've done is we basically scaled the UDIM uh, like the little islands so small that they only take up a pixel. So if we look at it again, uh, out of edit mode, it now takes the shape. Oh, that does not look great. And actually we might, I might change this. So now we can go into edit mode and we can move some stuff because this doesn't look great. Or we could try rotating everything and, and playing around with it because uh, we want to then uh, play around and see if we can get something better. So you know what? I'm going to actually try rotating it 90 degrees. Uh, so we're going to go back here. We're going to go bounding box center and we're going to do rotate uh, 90 so R90 is all I did okay so I'm a little bit more happy with how this looks now but I might uh, by myself now do some cleanup um, of just certain blocks I'd prefer to be different colors um, and, and, and really you don't need to do this step if it looked good for you. And this is only because we've gone and decided we want that certain effect with uh, models of such quality. In fact, honestly, you should maybe if you, if you do this, try reducing it, uh, or making the model a little bit more optimized. But other than that, I think we're almost ready. Okay. Now that we've finished doing whatever work we want to do to the 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 Adult Swim logo, we're gonna finally now work with nodes. So first things first, we want to get rid of all the gray stuff uh, or the the values that are not the right color, and that goes about because or that happens because in the image you can see when you zoom in, there are some pixels that are not perfectly white or not perfectly black, and that's just because of this being a JPEG, and it's uh, that's the way that a JPEG often compresses thing. It um, compresses things. So the way we fix that is we go into shading and we want to add a color ramp. So basically, since this is a monochrome value, even though it's sRGB, uh, it's, it's effectively monochrome. If we put color ramp here and I'm going to enable, we're just going to make sure we have node Wrangler enabled because it's a very useful add on. So go into add ons, type in, uh, sorry, node Wrangler. And make sure you have that enabled because it's just very useful and I'm, I'm just going to be using a lot of node Wrangler commands uh, or well, really very basic ones, but I will be using them. And it's a very good uh, add-on, you should always have it uh, enabled. So we have node Wrangler enabled, we can do control shift and click on a node and we can visualize what we have. So if you visualize this, we see that we have some values that are darker, some values that are brighter. And if you look at this, it's the same. We want to make this from linear to constant and we want to bring the white value to 0.5. We're going to look for the gray value. So if it's darker than 50% gray, we're going to have black. And if it's brighter than 50% gray, it's going to be white. So we just make sure that we have 50 
And once we've got that enabled, we can just check one more time and we can see there's no random gray values. Now it looks like a real Lego box. There's black, there's white, we only have those colors. One thing we can also do for realism, other than adding scratches, because I mean, there's so many I really don't want to, um, and, and it wouldn't really benefit the look, is add a little bit of randomness to the roughness. So we can go to object info, and this just gives some info on sp separate objects. So this isn't for, this won't apply to just all the blocks. It'll apply to every block individually will have its own random value. Uh, so each object has its own information. So if we go to random, we can see that some of the blocks have their own different value. So we can uh, utilize this to create uh, a, like, a, like a roughness map. So what we do is we take color ramp, we plug this into the color ramp and we bump up the black. And this way we have completely glossy and completely uh, diffuse. This isn't what we want. So we're gonna bring the black a little bit more white and the white a little bit more gray. And this, and this looks pretty good. We're gonna plug it into the roughness and we're gonna test it. So I'm gonna enable cycles rendered and I'm just gonna see how that looks. That looks pretty good. And now we can actually go to the word world properties, go to color, environment texture, we can open up an HDR. Uh, I'm gonna use this artist workshop. I got this on uh, HDRI Haven or now Poly Haven. Uh, and this is my favorite for textures like this that are indoors or uh, scenes like this which are indoors because I just like the colors. And that looks really good. Uh, and let's let's say this, or well actually, I'm gonna add some ambient occlusion. Cause if you look up here, you'll notice that the cavities are pretty bright. I mean, if you look at Legos, they're not super dark, but since it's a small cavity, they should be a little bit darker. So we're gonna go to material preview. We're gonna add an ambient occlusion node. We're gonna see what that looks like. We're gonna go to rendered so we can actually see what it looks like. And that looks really good. So we're gonna, add a mix RGB node. Plug that in here and add this as the second color. We're then going to do control shift and visualize this. And this looks perfect. We have some, uh, oh, well, no, actually this looks horrible. Never mind. We're going to make this multiply. Uh, one second. There we go. And you can see the black obviously doesn't get multiplied anymore because it's black, so that's fine. But we now have some more ambient occlusion just baked into the color of the wider bricks. Now we can visualize that again, and you can see this is how it looks with and without. And maybe that's a little too much. If that's the case, you can just change the factor. And I'm thinking, I'm actually quite happy with this. But if this was a little too much, you can change the factor. So one would multiply it further, and uh, zero would bring it completely down. I'm gonna go back to 0.5, I quite like that. Uh, once we're done with that, we're almost done, but there's one slightly nuanced thing which I think we should add, and it'll add a lot more realism to it. Um, when we look and zoom in really far into these uh, blocks, we'll see something seems off. And what that is, is that there is no bevel at the edge of the material, because these are such small blocks, and the corners are so sharp, that's very unnatural. Uh, that level of sharpness is something that you need like a precision tool to produce. And you would never want or try to make something that like completely sharp for a Lego. So we want to bevel it a little bit. So we're going to go and do this with a node though. Since we already have so much geometry, I don't want to add more. And just using a node and plugging into the normal is much, much easier. So we're going to add a new texture and we're going to call it, and we're going to find the bevel node and we're going to plug that into the normal. Now the scaling is going to be really off. It's going to look really bad. So let's bring it down the radius. I'm going to bring it down to about 0.01 and that looks really good. You can see now there's some beveling. It It's uh, affecting the light and it looks a lot better. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, and you can see that the the ambient occlusion seems really dark at first because it's it's also, you know, it's based on cycles, so it's sampling, um, which is why it looks really weird in the beginning. Um, but I'm really happy with this. I really like how this looks. So we're gonna, we're done. 
basically. We've added randomized roughness, we've added a bevel, we've added ambient occlusion. The material is basically done. If you want to find uh, some more um, uh, 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 some scratch textures online, you sh should look that up. You should find some and use them. I'd highly recommend it because honestly it shouldn't be too much of a strain on the computer. If you want to add subsurface scattering, be my guess, but I'm not gonna because it's just, you know, I don't want to make the computer have to work that hard. Um, and I'm just going to add now also a texture to the background and I'm going to call this background texture. And honestly, actually, you're done with the tutorial. At this point, everything I'm going to add is just for uh, creating the Adult Swim video. I'm sorry for that voice crack. Uh, for the Adult Swim video. And I'm just going to add a little bit of a brown thing in the background, brown background, maybe a little bit brighter. And I'm going to add some text that's going to be in this background and then the Legos are going to go on top of. So if you want to stick around to watch that, be my guest, but really it's not going to be anything too exciting. And if you want to now go and try making your own uh, rigid body simulation which drops and reveals something, you've probably already had the skills up until now. Uh, you've learned everything you need to and you can leave. Now, for everyone that's still staying, let's figure out how we're going to do the other thing. So let's actually hide the Lego for a second, just so it's easier. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to add, nope, I don't want to delete anything, escape. I'm going to add a, no, oh, come on, man. Yep, I'm going to add a timeline uh, graph editor. So I want to go to the front and I want to add... I'm going to locate in my file, uh, my finder, the textures I'm going to use. So I'm going to use Adult Swim Text 1, Adult Swim Text 2, and Adult Swim Text 3. All of these will be included within um, the GitHub. And uh, if we click on this, it, it shows you the text. You really should clean up after yourself. Uh, you don't want to leave a mess for my mom. Just kidding. Cleaning is boring. Obviously, it's pretentious, but that's the whole point. Um, now, we want to... We, our issue is that we don't want to have to go through the effort of unwrapping this correctly and having it perfectly centered. We can make Blender do all of the work for us. So we can do Control T on this, the first one, uh, and it'll add a mapping node. Now this lets us change uh, who is what the texture is using to figure out its position. That's called a vector. So currently we're using the UV information. We don't want to use the UV information. We want to use window. So what this uses is the camera. So if we visualize this, now it uses the camera to do that. And actually, if you go out of camera, it looks all funky because it's using your viewport. I mean, if you wanted to do something cool with this, you 100% could. This is something I can definitely see people making some sort of surreal art with. But other than that, now we're done. We go to zero. It's going to show up exactly where we want it. And that's great. And uh, we can just plug the vector output into each of these textures. And now we have exactly the result we were looking for. And that's great, but now we want to add everything to the uh, principled BSDF. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an RGB node and we're going to drag the color. Oh, wait one second. We're going to drag the color from here and put it into here. So now if you plug this in here, it looks the exact same. And we can now add some mix RGB nodes and start having some fun. So we're going to plug in the color here. And this looks good, but you'll notice that the color, since we're mixing some black into there, it's making the color a little darker than it was earlier, if you notice from the original. So the, um, not clamp, sorry. What we're going to do is we're going to do screen, and that removes the issues. And we'll do screen factor of one. So now it's completely added to the color and it looks completely normal. It'll add all the shading, it'll look really good. And now we wanna just duplicate this three times and I'll explain why in just a second. But basically, just within Blender, we're gonna animate this. So we're gonna plug this in here, this in here. We're gonna bring the factor down in all of these ones. And now we have uh, a way for us to animate which one of these shows up by animating the keyframes of the textures. That's something I. I hope people know, but some people might not know. You can animate within the node editor. And this is really useful uh, in, in a lot of cases where you want to have um, one of the image textures change. And that's why I brought up the timeline. So 
I'm going to render everything out as PNGs and then have a have DaVinci Resolve uh, make the image sequence into a video. So I just want to have one frame with this text, one frame with this text right here, and then another frame with this text. Um, and so to do that, I'm going to animate one frame where this is selected to one, this is zero. I'm going to press I, I, I. And what this has done is this has added a keyframe for each of these so that uh, it's at that value at uh, the first frame. Then I go to the, the editor, I go to frame two, I turn this into zero, I press I, and I turn this into one and I press I. But I also press I on this so that when I turn this to one in the next frame, it doesn't automatically return, it doesn't have a 0.5 value at the second frame. And then we go to the third area, we turn this to zero, we go I, this we don't need to do I because it's never changing. It'll, it'll remain one until eternity. But then we can turn this to one and press I. And now we have three frames where it changed the uh, texture seamlessly. This is perfect. And now it'll keep going. And if we re uh, show the Legos again, let's make sure it doesn't inter, inter. Yep, it doesn't overlap with everything. And we have the Legos fall into place it should interfere with the texture. And yep, it does. It now appears in the background and it's covered up by the Lego. This is perfect. Um, we can, we're basically done now. Uh, you can render this out, put it together. If you wanted to, you can now look at this, go into the node editor and, uh, well, I don't really want it. I'm gonna go into actually the dope sheet. Or uh, no, I even don't like the dope sheet. Um, Let's do timeline. Yeah, keying. This is perfect. We want timeline. And you can move this, these individually, all these nodes, so that everything is, if you wanted it to actually be, the timings to be baked in instead of having to do everything on your own in DaVinci, then you can do it that way. Anyway, that's the end of the tutorial. Um, if you want to add more stuff already, that's a mess. Maybe add some animation, you can do that. But that's it. The tutorial is done. I hope you enjoyed, and thank you for watching. Anyway